Mr. McKenna, always nice to have you with us. Thanks for joining us on this busy Tuesday. Thank you, John. So what do you think? You're watching Americans get out to vote today. You've seen all the polls. You've heard from the pundits. What's your takeaway on how things are shaping up today? Uh, lots of drama. <laughs> There'll be no end of drama. Uh, there's just so many moving parts here. Uh, I don't know how many billions have been spent, maybe as, many, as, as much as 10 or $11 billion on this campaign. And we're all coming down to finger biting results uh, uh, that we're waiting for. Um, on the surface, um, based on the polling, it, it looks as if we're going to see a change of government. In fact, it's probably setting up for a trifecta. Um, the Democrats are most certainly going to uh, um, win the House, in fact, may increase their seats in the House. <clears throat> uh, certainly, uh, Biden is going to have the majority of votes. Uh, whether that transforms into uh, electoral college votes is a different thing. But he'll most certainly have the majority of votes, and the odds are that he'll be the president. And I would say uh, it's much closer, but there's a reasonably good chance that uh, the Senate will turn to the Democrats as well. In that case, um, and that's very consequential, as you know, uh, President uh, uh, Biden, uh, if he is elected as president, his agenda depends largely on being able to get a lot of controversial measures through the Senate. So it's going to be very important what happens in the Senate races. Well, and this is why stock markets become such complicated places. You know, there's even some people wondering, gosh, if you've got Biden taking the White House, Republicans holding the Senate, does that um, force a president to be more aggressive with some things that were initially seen as less business friendly? And does that, does that spook the markets at some point? So we'll figure out with time. We're not going to worry about the ups and downs of the market um, just based on a lot of speculation. It is interesting to me, though, I was saying earlier, uh, Frank, that February 29th, that was the day Joe Biden won the primary in South Carolina, really turned uh, the tide for him. It was also the day that we learned about the first American who had died from COVID-19. Now, earlier in the program, we had Bob Kelly on the program, and he felt like the economy remains one of the key issues for people getting out to vote. But then you've got the COVID story as well and how the pandemic will continue to be addressed. What's your view on what is ultimately going to matter the most to Americans who are voting today? Yeah, I think you can't separate the two. Um, uh, certainly, uh, I think public health would be number one. It'd be number one in the minds of, uh, of, of many of the population. Um, and, and, and the economy would be a strong number two. But you can't separate the two um, unless we deal with COVID uh, appropriately. Uh, we're never going to be able to resume uh, uh, a, a full-paced economy. So the two go hand in hand. Um, uh, clearly, President Trump is more on the side of saying, let's open it wide open and let the economy sizzle. Uh, Biden being more on the side of saying, look, the best way of letting the economy take off is if we are very careful and prudent uh, that we have nationwide masking mandates, uh, social distancing, um, wash hands, all of the other protocols in place, and that we're aggressive about it. So um, they, they can each attack the economy from a different angle. But I would say that a lot of the public, especially vulnerable citizens, will be voting today on their health and who will have the best uh, uh, program in order to keep them safe and healthy in the weeks and months ahead. Frank, let's zero in on the Canada-US relationship. This morning, we've been going through some of the things we'll be watching for. You know, America First is something we've uh, heard a lot Oftentimes, people direct uh, that uh, thinking back to the Trump White House, but this is very much um, something that is alive and well in the United States, regardless of who's in the White House. Uh, we had a great conversation yesterday with uh, the former uh, U.S. Ambassador to Canada, Gordon Giffen, who, who made a case that um, some of the uh, global trading relationships could be in better shape with a Biden presidency, that Canada's relationship with the U.S. and the relationship between Canada and the U.S and China. Uh, and we were already talking about that story this morning with a complicated Alibaba storyline that's been developing, that that could improve. Um, there's just so many different things to watch for. But what are you thinking about when it comes to the Canada-U.S. relationship? Yeah, well, well look, um, our relationship will survive presidents because it, uh, it has a very deep underpinning with governors and with congressional leaders. 
and with the private economy in the United States interest groups and so on, and citizens, cousins, brothers, um, uh, allies, uh, so the relationship will survive. But there are things uh, about the respective candidates that are important. Uh, under Trump, we know that he that he's strongly in favor of building a fortress around America. We know that even as an ally, we've been hit with Section 230 uh, tariffs against steel and aluminum, which are usually reserved for enemies. We know that he thought NAFTA was the worst deal ever and put us through a uh, hell of a campaign before we finally uh, got it resolved. Uh, we also know that he does not believe in multilateralism. In fact, he has torn up just about every major uh, agreement that the U.S. has participated in. Uh, he's uh, taking full aim at WTO. Uh, he's uh, withdrawing from WHO. He withdrew from the Paris Accords, the Iranian Comprehensive uh, Treaty, uh, TPP, etc. The reason I mention that is because the bilateral relationship between the United States and Canada is really important, but the multilateral relationship in the world is critically important, not only to Canada, but to the rest of the world. It served as well as being guardrails and, uh, and helping us to manage relationships with other countries. And seeing a dismantling of those institutions is not in Canada's interest. So that also is something important to consider. And you could argue that uh, there is a path through to, re to restore our China relationship, uh, we'll see. It's, it's, it, it's a, uh, a difficult uh, path, but uh, remember that the apprehension of Ming Wanzhou is all around the Iranian uh, sanctions, which were put on by Trump, not by uh, the previous administration, Obama. And so you could make the argument that if, if, if normalcy was restored with Iran, that perhaps the raison d'etre for apprehending Meng Wanzhou would go away, and that would allow us to restore our relationship with China. So um, who knows? There are a lot of moving parts here, but, uh, uh, but certainly uh, change is on the horizon. Speaking of difficult paths, um, obviously you and, and so many Canadians know the challenges that our energy sector have faced. This inevitably is going to be one of the things people will be dissecting the days ahead. Our own Tara Weber is going to be watching how the election could determine the fate of Keystone XL. Uh, Andy Bell's watching what's happening with the renewable sector. Um, look, we know in this country there is a big push towards a green economy already. So we're having that dialogue in Canada as a nation. But but when you think about what comes out of this election on the energy front, what will be top of mind for you? Well, the headline will probably be Keystone XL if, uh, if Biden uh, follows through in rescinding the presidential permit. That may not be quite as acutely important today where we have uh, Trans Mountain Pipeline almost um, are well underway towards the Pacific Coast and Enbridge number three getting us into the United States and debottlenecking, which is increasing our takeaway capacity. But it is a headline uh, issue. But equally, uh, remember, if, uh, if Biden goes uh, heavily on a green agenda and environmental controls, methane emission standards, uh, uh, drilling uh, uh, restrictions, etc., that is quite consistent with what is happening in Canada now. A carbon tax we have in Canada, uh, if they were to introduce one in the United States, it would level the playing fields. So there is a chance that what we would get is a much more level playing field between Canada, uh, Canada and the United States, which would immediately make us more competitive. Mr. Riquetta, thanks as always for your time. So much to think about and uh, many hours to be watching how this all unfolds tonight. We appreciate your time as always. It'll be quite an evening. Thank you, John. Frank. Frank McKenna joining us, Canada's former uh, ambassador to the United States and the deputy chair of wholesale at TD Bank. 